couple of points I'm, I picked up on that I wanted to address. And first and foremost, when you have this debate, you cannot forget what you're talking about. You're, while some of these sites may be popular right now, there is no question that these sites are illegal. They would be deemed illegal by courts. And when you think about stopping traffic, stopping access to illegal sites, there are, in comparison, a relative few number of them. And some of the scenarios that were described would make you think that those few websites, blocking them, I should say, is going to fundamentally change the behavior of a vast majority of internet users and would also stop the vast majority of legitimate sites from doing the right thing to adopt DNSSEC. And then you have this scenario where the internet just falls apart before them. It's a, it's a far-fetched scenario. Uh, and to, I know it's not you know, exactly what he said, so I, I, I take that, but that was, that was my exaggeration. Uh, it would be bad, there's a, there's a bad scenario that would come out of having major widespread circumvention. Yes, there is. The MPAA's position has been that this is a relative few number of sites. If we address them relatively surgically, there's not that many of them, we would not be harming overall internet user behavior and we would not be affecting the NSSEC in the, in the broad uh, framework. Okay, so let's not forget what type of sites we're talking about. Um, let's see, other points I wanted to make. For the internet governance, uh, I'm really concerned about internet governance, I have to tell you. It's, it's a topic that I, I am pretty passionate about. And when I hear the argument that um, we're setting a, a, an example for other countries to use this technology in a similar way, you know, that definitely gets my attention. But then I have to say that we can be a good example. And I think that we, we would be because we do have a democratic process and we would have the, 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 uh, the right types of checks and balances in place so that when we do implement our system, it's gonna be something that other countries can look at and say, well, you know, there, there has to be law enforcement online, but the United States is, is doing it in a very reasonable way and in a, in a very transparent way. It's not going to be uh, <coughs> the Chinese way. And believe me, any country out there that wants to start filtering their websites, our websites, they're already probably doing it. Uh, they're not going to wait for us to adopt DNS filtering to stop pirate sites, foreign pirate sites, to, to go ahead and stop, stop free speech in their country. They're already doing that. So I have a hard time um, accepting that argument. I do say that it, it, we should be very careful about how we do it, because we will be scrutinized if we, if we go down this path of using any technological measure to enforce law enforcement here, to enforce our laws here in the United States. Um, we will be an example, so we should be very careful and do it correctly. There's a lot of uh, groups that we should involve. I think we should uh, involve the Internet Governance Forum, possibly the Internet Society may have a role. Um, ICANN may have a role. You know, if we do it that way, then uh, we might be able to limit any potential balkanization of the internet or any fragmentation of the DNS system because there might be a way to do this on, on, a, on a more broad scale. 